when we leave today, but uh, my name is Catlin, so I'm the mobility coordinator out at DART. Uh, so I've been uh, at the organization for just over five years. I do a lot of our education, outreach, training, uh, working with groups to help them learn how they can use public transportation. Um, so, ooh, sorry, that seemed really loud for a second. Um, so a little bit of background on DART. Uh, so if you're not familiar, DART is the Des Moines Area Regional Transit Authority. Uh, we were officially formed in 2006. Uh, obviously, public transportation in the metro has existed much longer than that. Uh, but we went, uh, un we underwent a uh, organizational change uh, in 2006 uh, that formed DART as a regional entity. Um, so we are one of the only regional systems in Iowa uh, and the largest public transportation agency in the state. Um, currently, we provide services to 11 cities, uh, including uh, and, and provide services within Polk County. Uh, all of that is uh, governed by a board of commissioners that we have that represent each one of those member communities. So all local elected officials, city, city council members, Polk County supervisors, uh, potentially mayors uh, are involved in that process. Um, and then a little bit on our fleet. Um, we do have about 140 buses in our fleet and about 1600 bus stops. And we'll talk a lot more about all of that uh, here in a bit. Um, so on the side there, you do see some kind of statistics. You know, we have uh, 30 plus bus routes. We have a number of park and ride locations where people can drive uh, maybe their vehicle and park somewhere uh, while they get on the bus. Um, and then that covers some of the uh, different services that we offer that I'll talk more, quite a bit more about today. Um, DART's mission uh, is to enrich lives, connect communities, and expand opportunities. As you can imagine, providing public transportation, um, uh, the whole goal is to be able to have people out in the community accessing resources, services, programs, um, and public transportation is one of those ways that we can do that. Um, our vision is to facilitate affordable, seamless mobility options to support economic prosperity. Um, I know when we developed uh, this vision statement, economic prosperity was a key indicator there. We know that over 50% of our riders indicate that they use DART to get to and from work. Uh, but we also know that uh, outside of that, people are uh, using public transportation to get to school, to further their education, to get to the grocery store, uh, to spend money potentially, which all has a ripple effect on supporting the economy. So um, the first part of our presentation today is really going to cover some of the basics of our fixed route bus network. Um, and I couldn't do this conversation without talking about Dart Central Station. Uh, so if you're not familiar, uh, this is a lovely little photo we have here of Dart Central Station. Um, it is located at Six and Cherry, uh, just a couple blocks from here, uh, downtown uh, Des Moines. Um, the reason that I uh, talk about Dart Central Station is uh, that it is the hub of our network. So the way that we've designed our bus network is that all of our routes come in, in and out of the station. Uh, so a lot of times our riders rely on coming into the station to transfer potentially from one bus to another to get to their final destination. Um, so this building uh, was built in 2012, uh, so we just celebrated our 10-year anniversary of having the station. Uh, prior to that, we did not have a central location, uh, so uh, we had, uh, if you're familiar with downtown Des Moines, uh, all of our buses lined up along Walnut Street uh, downtown, which is just a couple blocks uh, north of the station, uh, but individuals who are using DART um, were uh, just out in the elements, uh, walking down the street to figure out where their bus was, to, to figure out where it was in the line of the buses pulling up. Uh, so uh, Dart Central Station has really allowed us to provide a lot of amenities to our riders um, and really just uh, have a better customer experience um, for those who uh, rely on and use our services every day. So a little bit about the station. Uh, the building itself is going to be open anytime our service is running. So that's seven days a week. Um, that is as early as five o'clock in the morning, as late as 11 o'clock at night, depending on the day of the week. Uh, inside the building, we do have our customer service window. So we have a, a team of customer service representatives um, that are there assisting, uh, answering questions, working directly with our riders to help uh, them get where they need to go, uh, potentially purchasing bus passes, providing them with real-time information about 
the routes and the schedules, helping them plan trips on the bus, signing them up for the programs that we offer. Um, so they are uh, working at customer service seven days a week, both in person, but also answering the phones. Um, so they uh, really are a pivotal uh, part of our operations. Uh, but was also something that we didn't have prior to Dart Central Station. We had a number that people could call into, um, but we didn't have that face where people could walk up and directly ask someone a question. Um, so this has been a really nice um, addition to our service. Um, in addition, uh, at the station, we do have all of our printed maps and schedules. Uh, so I mentioned earlier that we have about 30 plus routes, uh, different bus routes that we offer. Um, all of those printed schedules are available uh, down at the station. Um, inside the building, we also have restrooms, drinking fountain, benches where people can sit and wait while they're waiting for the bus, obviously inside and outside the building. So depending on what the weather conditions are, um, again, just trying to provide some of those customer amenities. Outside the building is really um, where you can say kind of the action happens. Uh, so we have uh, multiple um, platforms where our buses are pulling up to uh, and dropping off customers and picking up uh, new customers. Uh, so every route that comes in and out of the station has a designated platform that is departing from. Um, so you can kind of see those um, up here. They have a sign on the, the front of them, uh, a little uh, electronic board that tells you what route, where it's traveling to, when that bus is leaving. Um, so it has some kind of wayfinding uh, methods to help you make sure you know where you're going. Um, not pictured here. We also do have some computer monitors out at the platform that kind of act like a detour board if you've ever been, not a detour board. Sorry, there's a lot of detours in Des Moines right now. So I've been uh, talking a lot about detours. A departure board. So if you've ever flown in an airport or an airplane or at, left an airport, you have the departure board that shows you all the gates and all of that. So we have something very similar um, on the platforms, but also in the building uh, to help direct people to um, the platform that their bus might be leaving from. And then all of those um, platforms are connected by a crosswalk um, that's really there to help people get in and out of uh, the building and to the platform that they need safely. Um, because we do have buses pulling in and every is out every couple minutes, uh, which is we want to make sure that people are safe while they're down there. Um, so we do have the, the uh, crosswalk for that reason. Um, and then from a safety and security standpoint, uh, anytime that the building is open, uh, we always have at least one staff member who's working uh, either in the building or out on the platforms um, during busier times of day. We'll have supervisors, security officers, really just helping provide direction, uh, making sure people know what, where they're supposed to go and getting where they need to go. Um, and then on the north side of our building, we do have a B-Cycle station. And if you're not familiar with B-Cycle, that's our local uh, bike rental company. Um, so there's a little kiosk out there that you can actually check out and rent a bike uh, for periods of time. Um, and that's right there at Dart Central Station to help people maybe get to their final destination if uh, where they're traveling maybe isn't uh, the station, but somewhere nearby. So I want to talk a little bit about some of our uh, bus routes and how our, our, our service is actually set up. Uh, so we have a couple types of bus service. Uh, the first being uh, what we would call our local routes. Um, this is going to uh, comprise a majority of our service. So uh, about 18 of our 30 routes are what we consider local routes. Uh, the term local really just indicates that they operate on local city streets going through different neighborhoods. Um, these are often the routes, uh, again, that start and end their service at Dart Central Station, uh, oftentimes have more frequent service on them, meaning there might be service um, that's running in a regular cadence, potentially as often as every 20 minutes, 30 minutes, hour. Um, again, every route is going to be set up a little bit different, but that regular cadence is really built into the schedule for our local routes. Um, oftentimes, these are also the routes that have bus stops every couple blocks on them to really provide a lot of flexibility for our riders uh, to be able to hop off and hop on wherever it's going to be most convenient for them. Um, the other thing with our uh, local routes, um, if I didn't mention that, I can't remember, they uh, typically are going to start and end their service at Dart Central Station. Uh, so oftentimes, they will travel from Dart Central Station to a destination out in the community. And then once they get there, they turn around and come back following a very similar path. So uh, oftentimes, that's where you'll see bus stops on either side of the street. Uh, depending on which direction folks are, are heading, they can kind of hop on whichever one makes most sense for them. Um, and we'll talk a lot more about the bus fares here in 
a couple of minutes, but the base fare on the local route is going to be a dollar twenty-five. Um, the other type of service that we have, this is going to comprise about 10 of our routes, um, are what we call our express routes. Uh, these are more uh, what we would consider a traditional commuting service. Um, so these are going to be routes that travel between downtown Des Moines to our, some of our suburban communities. Uh, oftentimes, these are the routes that use the interstates to travel across town. One second. I think I'm realizing what this microphone is doing. Okay. Maybe this, nope, that doesn't seem to be better. Um, can you all hear me okay still? So, okay. I just want to make sure. Sometimes it seems like it's cutting in and out. So I don't know if you're able to hear everything. But um, so our express routes are uh, intended to be more of a commuting service. Um, commuting in that uh, they operate kind of the traditional Monday through Friday commuting schedule, getting people into downtown for work and then getting them home at the end of the day. So with that, they're often only running Monday through Friday. Um, they're often uh, operating during kind of morning peak commute times, which would be about 6 a.m. until 8 a.m. Take a break during the middle of the day and resume service from about 4 until 6 p.m. Uh, so oftentimes they just have a little bit less service on them um, uh, and travel quite a bit further than some of our local routes. So the express routes are really traveling out to our suburban communities like Inkeny, Altoona, uh, Grimes, Johnston, Urbandale, Clive, West Des Moines, uh, to give you a couple examples. Um, to back up a little bit, I do just want to point out too um, that we do have local route service that also services some of our uh, suburban communities. So we have local routes to go out into Johnston and West Des Moines, uh, Clive, uh, Windsor Heights, uh, West Des Moines. Um, Altoona, I don't know why I was lucky on that one, and Pleasant Hill. So um, again, you know, we, we structure the routes in a certain way, uh, but the express routes are just going to naturally have a little bit less service on them. Um, and because they're really they were designed to meet kind of the downtown employer needs, um, they actually do not come to the station. They pick up and drop off along Grand Avenue um, and Locust, which if you're not familiar with those, those are the two one-way streets that are on either side of the library right now. Uh, so Locust heads uh, west and then Grand, no, sorry, Locust heads east, Grand heads west. Um, and then because these routes do travel quite a bit further than our local routes, the base fare on them is going to be typically $2. Um, I'd be remiss not to mention our downtown shuttle. So this is our D-line. Uh, if you're not familiar with the D-line, it operates in a loop uh, along downtown heading uh, west uh, out to the Capitol building. Gosh, I'm getting my directions messed up. Heads east out to the Iowa State Capitol building and then west uh, to the Western Gateway Park. So just a little, not too far from here at the library, uh, but just as that giant loop along Locust and Grand uh, with about 15 minute service running Monday through Saturday. Um, I will point out uh, during the summer months, we do start running that service a little bit earlier to help people get to the farmer's market. Uh, so typically the, the summer service on the, the D-line starts in May. Ooh, which is coming up pretty soon. Um, and we'll start running as early as 8 a.m., uh, I believe, or potentially 7 a.m. I can never remember which they, which they do there. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of our other smaller types of service. Uh, these are mostly going to be very geographically bound. Um, primarily serving some of our suburban communities. So, uh, but I do just want to point out some of those unique uh, transportation options that we do have um, that are really tailored to some of those communities. So we do have some on-call service um, that is available in some of our smaller communities. Uh, this is going to be where people can call DART, uh, reserve a trip uh, to go somewhere within their community. Uh, they would get picked up at their door and then take a destination within that community. Uh, oftentimes these zones are kind of geographically bound uh, and have limited service hours, uh, sometimes a daily service, sometimes a weekly service. Again, we really work closely with those member communities to design this service. Uh, but the service that we have in Ankeny and Grimes is going to be daily, and then we do have some weekly services available in Bondurant and then the Easter Lake area. Um, again, these services are always open to the public. Anyone can use them. They just have to call into DART to reserve those trips. Uh, ideally, again, they're living and traveling somewhere within that zone. 
Um, similarly, um, we do have a newer service that we just launched in Ankeny. Uh, this is an on-demand pilot uh, that is operating in Ankeny. Uh, we have a couple of vehicles that are in Ankeny operating uh, five days a week, Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. until 6.30 p.m. Uh, that service is uh, set up a little bit like our on-call service, but it is um, set up uh, to allow same-day reservations and technically on-demand reservations. Uh, so individuals traveling uh, within Ankeny um, can actually book trips through our mobile app uh, or by calling customer service or reserving those trips through our website. Um, and that can be when you need them or in advance. Uh, so it kind of operates um, in a lot more flexible environment. Uh, if you've ever used an Uber or Lyft type service, it's very similar to that where once you schedule your trip, you get a notification when your vehicle uh, or your driver is en route and then can have real-time tracking to see the bus coming towards you so you know how far away it is, how long you have to wait, things like that. Um, so that's a newer service that we're piloting. Um, it's gone really well in Ankeny. We launched that in November of 2021. Uh, so we're coming up on about a year and a half in there. Um, and we're getting ready to launch um, two actually new Dart On Demand services uh, or zones uh, in West Des Moines around the Jordan Creek Town Center, uh, as well as the, the Riverbend neighborhood, which will comprise most of the 50314 zip code. Uh, so kind of, um, if you're familiar with that area, it's like um, the Oak Ridge neighborhood and then north of University from MLK to Second Avenue uh, up to Broadlawns. That kind of area will be covered by a dart on the um, similarly, uh, another kind of technology driven solution, uh, we have uh, a service we have uh, called Flex Connect that's currently available in North Des Moines and Urbandale. Uh, this is a service that we launched in 2019 that replaced an older fixed route service. So we used to have a route that operated in this zone that you see here um, that kind of uh, did a loop uh, throughout uh, the area. Uh, primarily getting people uh, from more residential areas to a bus stop. It was basically a connector route or a feeder route. So it was picking people up near their residential homes and then dropping them off at another bus stop where they could get on a bus route coming into downtown. Um, so that service was one that we saw ridership decline quite a bit over the years, but we wanted to try to still provide that service in a different way. Um, so this service, we actually partnered with Uber. Um, so individuals within the zone can request an Uber trip uh, that DART pays for um, to get dropped off at a transfer point at the Bucks Arena, uh, the Gloria Day Lutheran Church, uh, or Merle Hay Mall. Uh, so it's intended to be kind of a first mile, last mile connection to help people get to their bus stop or get home uh, from a trip on the bus. Um, and it's been a, a pretty well-received service. Um, we, um, we've been operating it since 2019 and, and continue to operate it because uh, people are still using it. Uh, it's really helped uh, kind of connect people who live in a very dense residential area uh, to get to a location like Merle Hay Mall where then they can just hop on the bus and go where they need to go. Okay, so that kind of covers the various kind of types of bus service that we have. Um, I always like to talk a little bit about how our routes are set up and how uh, you can get that information about how the service looks and what it looks like and how to understand all this information that we have about DART. Because um, as someone who uh, was new to riding public transportation when I started DART, uh, looking at these route maps and schedules was really confusing. Um, now I've been doing this for a while, so I've really started to understand it, uh, but I do think that there's some value in talking about it um, and recognizing that the way that you plan a trip when you're out there riding the bus may not be looking at a printed map and schedule, uh, but this kind of really lays the foundation for understanding how the routes are set up. Um, and if you're using other types of information like an app, or Google Maps or something like that, you're gonna get information that's based on these schedules. 
Um, so what we have here on the screen is a route map for the uh, local route number three. Uh, this is our route that it's one of our busier routes, uh, probably in the top three, um, that travels uh, from down, Dart Central Station down down here in the corner and then travels all the way west to Valley West Mall. As you can see, a majority of the route is traveling on University Avenue as it goes over um, to the Windsor Heights area, drops down to Walmart and then heads all out to, um, to Merle Hay Mall, sorry, Valley West Mall. Um, and a couple of things that I always like to point out here that kind of just help you orient to what you're seeing here. Uh, the orange line is obviously the route that the bus is traveling. We have labeled intersections along the way. Um, those are what we call time points. Uh, think of them as major intersections on the route that we use to actually time out how long does it take the bus to get from point A to point B, from point B to point C, et cetera. Um, so that serves as our way of communicating to our riders and to our operators where the bus should be at a given time. So that'll make a lot more sense when I switch to the next slide where we actually look at the schedule. Um, this does not represent all of the bus stops on these routes. This is just a few of them. Uh, again, we typically have bus stops on our routes that are every couple blocks, um, but this kind of provides that framework of uh, kind of where the, the major intersections are um, and then how you can kind of understand the schedule. Um, on the, the left-hand side over there, I would just point out we have the name of the route. So this is Route 3, University Avenue. Uh, tells you a little bit about the service. It runs Monday through uh, Sunday, so seven-day-a-week service. Um, and then we do print the, the platform assignment there on the actual map. So that way, if you are coming into Dart Central Station, you want to know how to connect to this route, you know what platform to go to. Um, you also have on here uh, indication where the route might intersect with other bus routes. So if we look over there on the left hand side, we have uh, a couple other smaller gray circles that are just showing you this is approximately where the bus is going to intercept with the route 52, 94, 93. Um, so it just kind of gives you an example of, of how people might be connecting from one route to another um, to facilitate those transfers if they're doing that out in the community. Um, so that's kind of this, the, the map part of it itself. Uh, I will say every route that we have has a map. Uh, all of that information, again, is available down at Dart Central Station. We have all of the maps printed on our schedule or on our website. And then on our website, we have kind of a comprehensive map that shows you all of those routes. Uh, but this is kind of the, the core of uh, what the single routes look like. Um, if we were looking at the printed materials, which there are some available in the back, if anyone wants to follow along on those. Uh, but when we open that up, then we see the actual timetable of the schedule. Um, so where a lot of people get turned around is understanding the two different columns. Uh, so if you think about the route having two different directions. So if you remember, uh, the bus starts down here at Dart Central Station and then it travels out to its destination at Valley West Mall. That's one direction. So that's one portion of the route. The other portion of the route is once that bus gets to Valley West Mall, it turns around and comes back to Dart Central Station. Oftentimes we call that inbound and outbound. So outbound is the bus leaving Dart, traveling out into the community. Inbound is the bus leaving the community, coming back into the station. Um, so on the, the top headers here, we have those directions, outbound, inbound. I often don't talk about the like westbound, northbound, southbound, because I think that's more confusing uh, because there'll be like portions of the route that actually go north, but it's the eastbound because most of the route goes east. So at the end of the day, I always like to think of it as is the bus coming into downtown, into Derrick Central Station, or is it traveling out away from downtown, out into the community? Um, so that's the two different columns you have here. So if we look at the headers, we have Dart Central Station, we have University in Six. Again, those match those time points, those major intersections. And then you can see how long it takes the bus to get from Dart Central Station to the next time point and then to that final destination of Valley West Mall. And then what we have over here on the other side is the, the backtrack. So once the bus gets to Valley West Mall, it turns around and how long it takes to get back to Dart Central Station. Um, so that's kind of what you're seeing here. And then as we move down again, those are uh, kind of giving you a sense of what that frequency of the bus looks like. So uh, this is a route that runs every 20 minutes. So you see the bus leaving approximately every 20 minutes from the station. 
Um, and then at the top, you do see that the service is telling you if it's uh, Monday through Friday um, service, and then the weekend service just now uh, will often be or always be listed separately. Um, and that would be on the back of the schedule because the hours that the, the bus is running on the weekends is going to differ than during the week. Oftentimes, our service starts later on Saturdays, ends earlier on Saturdays and Sundays, and might run at a different frequency. So the during the week service oftentimes runs more frequently than the weekend service just because of ridership. We see a lot less people riding the bus on the weekends than we see during the week. Okay, so that kind of covers the general kind of schedule information. And now we really get to the fun part of uh, understanding how you're gonna actually use the service. So um, at the end of the day, the most important thing for our riders is to understand where they're gonna catch the bus. Um, so we kind of talked a little bit about the maps and schedules. We'll talk a little bit more here in a couple minutes about some different tools that you have available to find bus stops and understand those routes. But um, at the end of the day, what you're looking for uh, is the bus stop sign that you see here. Um, this is gonna be where uh, all of our riders who are using the fixed route catch their bus. Um, again, we have about 1600 bus stops that are scattered throughout our service area. Um, they're all going to have some key information on the bus stop sign that's important to pay attention to. Uh, so on the very top of the sign, uh, underneath that dark logo, you see a number. Uh, that number is going to correspond to the bus routes that pick up at that specific stop. Um, so depending on where you live, where you're catching the bus, you might have a bus stop that has one number on it, uh, or you might be at a bus stop that has multiple numbers on it. So if we look at the bus stops that are around the library today, uh, we're often going to see multiple numbers listed on there because since they're in downtown, a lot more of our service is coming into downtown. Uh, so we'll see all those numbers listed versus if we walk to my bus stop. So I live off of Franklin. Uh, my bus stop has one number on it because the route number five is the only bus that picks up. So again, that's what you're gonna kind of see here um, on the top sign there. Uh, below that, you see a, a orange sign that has a couple different numbers on it. One being uh, our phone number, our website. So a lot of ways to get information about the bus, but the most important one uh, is the bus stop number. That's gonna be that four to five digit number that is, has the pound symbol or hashtag in front of it. Um, think of that as the address of the bus stop. Now, uh, for you at the bus stop, that number won't mean much, but that means a lot to us. So every bus stop has a unique number, uh, and we have our system in which we have every bus stop coded, uh, so we can type into our system what bus stop you're at if you call in or going onto the website or the app or things like that. And then once we know that number, we can tell you exactly what routes pick up there. We can tell you when that next bus is coming, how frequently that bus is riding, uh, everything down to knowing who the bus driver is that day. Um, so we, that's where we can really dive into that really specific information that if you're out at a bus stop might be really helpful for you to know. Uh, oftentimes you don't wanna just walk out to a bus stop and wait, you wanna know when is that bus coming, right? So having access to that bus stop number is one kind of important way to do that. Um, but when you go to wait at the bus stop, there's kind of really three key things I always talk about. Uh, be visible, be early, and be prepared. Uh, be visible because you want to make sure that the bus driver uh, who is driving that bus can see you. Um, so they, have, they are only going to stop where people are getting on the bus or where people want to get off. Um, so you do want to make sure that you're visible out there waiting at the bus stop. Uh, if it's really late at night, really early in the morning, uh, I always encourage people to maybe wear something reflective if that bus stop isn't really well lit. Uh, with technology the way it is today, if you have a cell phone, what I will sometimes do is just turn my, uh, my flashlight on on my cell phone uh, and just have that on while I'm waiting at the bus stop to make sure that the bus driver can see me. Um, or when in doubt, as the bus pulls up, you can kind of step forward at that bus stop to make sure that they see you, not step into the street, that's not safe. Uh, but again, just step forward so that way they see that you're there actively waiting for the bus stop. Uh, be early. So uh, obviously we kind of talked a little bit about the schedules. Uh, those schedules are really tight. There's not a lot of downtime built into the routes because we want to help people get where they need to go as quickly as we can. Uh, so, but with that, uh, the bus isn't gonna wait for you. So, uh, you know, you really wanna be out at that bus stop a couple minutes early. Uh, I always say three to five minutes early to make sure you catch the bus that you need. 
Now, what I will say is that if the bus is running on time, it's just gonna pick people up as it's going and there's not gonna be a problem. But I have seen uh, times where the bus, uh, maybe because uh, it's early in the day, there's not much traffic out there, the bus starts to run early. Well, the last thing we wanna do um, is to get to a bus stop before someone expects us to be there. Um, so oftentimes what you'll see there is the bus might pull up to a stop and then it'll sit there and wait for a couple minutes. And if you are on the bus or if you see that happening, oftentimes what the operator is doing is they're like letting the schedule catch up. So that way they can continue to run on time um, and that make sure that people are at the bus stop when they need to. Um, and then obviously sometimes the buses run late. That is just the nature of dealing with traffic and construction and detours. Um, we're really getting into peak detour season right now with events um, like the marathon this weekend or the half marathon this weekend with construction uh, downtown and, and all over the, the, the metro. Um, so, so obviously we're always keeping those things in mind, but be visible, be early, be prepared. So as that bus pulls up, uh, you want to make sure that you are ready to board the bus uh, when it pulls up. So have everything that you're bringing on the bus with you. Uh, have your bus fare ready, however you plan on paying. Uh, have all of that out, ready to go, and ready to get on the bus as it pulls up. Uh, so when the bus does pull up, uh, there's a couple of things that I always encourage you to, to uh, double check or confirm. Uh, one being uh, the route name and number of the bus that pulls up. Uh, so obviously, if you're at a bus stop that has multiple routes to pick up there, this is going to be probably the more important piece is to make sure you're getting on the right. So on the top of the bus, uh, you'll have an LED sign that on the left corner will have the route number listed, and then you will see the destination sign scrolling across the top. That destination sign is going to have the name of that bus route and then where it's traveling to. So it's kind of going to give you that final destination. So uh, using the three as an example, if we were to get on the three and we're heading out to Valley West Mall, that destination sign would say University Avenue to Valley West Mall. If we were getting on the bus heading into downtown on the number three, it might say Valley West Mall to Dart Central Station. Um, so it's gonna kind of tell you which direction it's traveling. Uh, and that could be a, a key point of information for you as you're getting on to make sure you're getting on heading the right direction. If you're like, oh wait, I'm actually heading downtown and that sign says Valley West Mall, you might be getting on at the wrong bus stop. So that is a good time where you, if you are at that bus stop, you can just confirm with that operator, you know, are you heading this direction? Should I be getting on at this bus stop or is there a different bus stop that I should be getting on? Um, so always just double check with the operator as the bus pulls up. Um, there are a couple of kind of key features that I always like to point out about the buses themselves. Um, they do have a bike rack on the front of them. So all of our buses are equipped with that bike rack that can accommodate a standard size bike with standard size wheels. So none of the like really thick kind of off wheel bike uh, off-roading kind of tires that you see sometimes, uh, but standard size bikes with those standard size wheels. Um, each of the bike racks can accommodate up to two bikes. Um, you know, so if you're using a bike to get to your final destination or to get to the bus stop, uh, the, the way that you can safely stow that bike on the bus would be using that bike rack. Um, and then we do have some accessibility features that the buses have, uh, one being that the bus can kneel, which means it's gonna lower itself to be flush with the curb. Um, that's just gonna help everyone get on and off the bus uh, who might need that assistance or can't step up onto the bus. Um, and then we also do have a ramp that can deploy to help people get on the bus who might be using a mobility device, a walker, stroller, cane, anything like that. Um, that's just gonna provide that extra level of assurance that someone can get on. Now, when it comes to paying a uh, fare, that's kind of the next thing that you're going to do. So once you've boarded the bus, uh, you're going to see uh, the operator, obviously, and then uh, right next to them is going to be the fare box. That's kind of that uh, black uh, and the bottom of this box looks silver. Um, so everyone pays fare in some way when they're boarding the bus. There's a variety of ways that you can pay that fare. That could be with cash. It could be using bus tokens. Uh, we have a variety of bus pass options, uh, the MyDart mobile app, uh, so uh, app on your phone. Um, and what I don't have listed on here is then we also have partner passes where people might be using their employee ID uh, or something like that to pay their fare as well. Um, so, you know, as you can see here, there's a spot on the fare box to swipe for a bus pass, insert coins, uh, cash, 
And then there's a little reader in the front here where you would scan a QR code uh, using the mobile app or a, another type of pass. We'll talk more about the cost of the fares here in a couple of minutes, but this is just a slide to kind of talk about uh, those different types of payment. And then while you're on the bus, obviously you're, you're welcome to grab a seat wherever you can or are able to on the bus. Um, one note, we do typically uh, reserve the first couple of seats for individuals who are older, uh, individuals who might have disabilities or might be using a, a, any sort of mobility device. Um, and then the, the number one rule on the bus is, you know, we want you to have a safe and enjoyable experience. So show other people on the bus respect. Hopefully they show you that same respect back. Um, you know, we really discourage people from, you know, fighting, bullying, swearing, or doing anything on the bus. We have people of all different ages and backgrounds on the bus. Uh, it's a really kind of cool experience if you've not rode the bus before to see uh, students who are going to school, uh, individuals who might be refugees and new to the country, our nurses and doctors going to work at the hospital. It's really kind of a, a really cool experience. Uh, so, but at the end of the day, we want everyone to have an enjoyable experience. Uh, you know, we want to make sure that you stay safe while you're on the bus. You now, if you have any questions, concerns, uh, please do let the operator know. Um, they're going to be your kind of safe person to go to on the bus. If something's happening on the bus that shouldn't, uh, you can alert the, the operator of the bus, maybe move closer to the front of the bus if you feel more comfortable there. Um, we do have free Wi-Fi available that you can connect to while you're on the bus. A lot of our newer buses actually have USB ports underneath the seats. So you can actually like plug in and charge your phone while you're on the bus. Um, so all sorts of little kind of amenities that we can provide. Um, when it comes to food and beverages, again, we want everyone uh, to be kind of recognize that the buses are for everyone and we have people getting on and off the bus uh, all the time. Uh, so we really, uh, discourage people from eating on the bus just for sanitary reasons because there's so many people getting on and off. Um, liquids that are brought on the bus, you know, really should have a container, something that can close, a lid. Um, and then we do have some smaller trash bags at the front, of, the, front, the front of the bus that you can use for trash or our busier bus stops will have trash cans for, for larger trash items. Uh, the best, you know, kind of thing that you can remember is anything you bring on the bus should leave with you when you get off the bus. Uh, if you do ever lose anything on the bus, just know you can uh, contact customer service to see if that item's been turned in. Uh, we have, uh, we store all of our lost items that get turned in at the end of the day um, behind customer service down at Dart Central Station. So you can always go there if you need to claim anything. Um, and uh, just because you lose something on the bus does not mean that someone has taken it. We get things turned in all the time, wallets, cell phones, keys, bags of groceries, things like that. So truly, please let us know if you have lost something on the bus. Uh, it's pretty likely that it will get turned in. Um, and then obviously once you're on the bus, uh, you're probably traveling to a destination, right? So uh, it is your responsibility as a rider to let the bus driver know, the operator of that bus know when you wanna get off. Uh, so the best way to do that is there's a yellow cord that runs the entire length of the bus. Uh, you will pull that about a block or so before your destination. Um, and when I say your destination, I do want to reiterate that your destination would be a bus stop. So the bus is only going to stop and let you off at a bus stop. Um, so it is um, important to keep that in mind. You're not necessarily always going to get dropped off right in front of where you're traveling to, uh, but hopefully we can get you as close as you uh, as close as we can at that bus stop. Um, so again, you know, try to be on the lookout for where you want to get off and, and allow that operator enough time to slowly stop the bus by pulling that cord um, as soon as you see the bus stop that you want to get off at. And word of advice, if you pull the cord too soon, it's okay. You can just let the bus driver know next stop. Um, don't feel like you have to get off early if you pull it early. Um, I know sometimes people get really nervous about that. It happens all the time. Um, just don't be that, you know, that little child who's sitting next to their parent who pulls the cord every bus stop, you know, don't do that. But if you do pull it on accident, just know, let the operator know you want to get off at the next stop. Um, okay, so I'm going to shift now. That kind of really covers a lot of the information I wanted to talk about specifically on like how to ride the bus. Uh, but I do want to talk about some of the different programs that we have, and then I'll talk about some of the different tools. Um, and technology that we uh, have as well. So um, obviously uh, what's 
uh, probably top of mind for a lot of people is how much is it going to cost me to ride the bus? Um, and at the end of the day, uh, the easiest way I can answer is that is by saying it depends. Uh, it depends on who you are, it depends on how often you're writing, uh, depends on what service you're using. So there's a lot of variables there. Uh, but what I can tell you is it could cost as little as nothing. Uh, so you could write for free. Uh, it could be 75 cents uh, up to about 48 or $58 a month. So there's a lot of gray area, a lot of variability there. Uh, but what I could say uh, is that we really have two distinct types of bus fare. Uh, our, our regular fare and then our, our half fare. So we'll talk about who qualifies for half fare next, uh, but a regular fare is gonna be $1.75 each time you board the bus. Uh, obviously, if you're using the bus daily to get to and from work or school or appointments, uh, paying $1.75 each time you get on the bus is gonna add up really fast, right? Uh, maybe you're taking a bus into downtown and getting on another bus to get to your final destination. Obviously, you can see how that would really add up. Um, so I encourage that paying cash, that paying that, that base fare, really for our riders who maybe aren't riding very frequently. Uh, maybe you're just taking the bus here and there once or twice a month. Um, then paying that, that base fare is probably going to be fine. Maybe you're just taking one bus to get to your destination and back. Uh, but really, any time you're getting on the bus more than three times in one day, uh, you really should consider having a pass. Now, there are multiple types of passes that you can purchase. Uh, the easiest one uh, for a lot of our riders, if they're riding the bus multiple times a day, would be a day pass. Um, so the day pass is going to be that little paper slip that you see there in the left-hand corner. Uh, the, the reason that that's the easiest is that that is something you can buy directly on the bus. Uh, you can also buy it through our mobile app, uh, or you can buy it from Dart Central Station, uh, from customer service. Uh, but you buy it when you get on the bus, and then you, it prints out of the fare box, and then you just have that with you, and you scan that each time you get on the bus the rest of that day. Um, uh, but... Again, that's going to be a full fare day pass for $4 or $2 for a half fare pass. If you're riding the bus every day, again, you're starting to see how that would add up, right? Um, so then you really want to consider getting a longer term bus pass, which could be a weekly or monthly bus pass. Um, so our weekly and monthly bus passes, we do have physical passes that you can purchase. They're going to be little plastic cards um, that have the dates that they're good for pre-printed on it, kind of what you see here. Um, and that's going to be good for an entire week or an entire month, depending on which one you purchase. Uh, those are going to be available at Dart Central Station, and we do sell those passes at a variety of uh, what we call our pass sale outlet locations. Uh, that's going to be everyone from Hy-Vee, Price Chopper, Cash Saver, uh, the Walmart in Windsor Heights, the Walmart in Altoona, the Franklin, or, I'm sorry, the Forest Avenue Library as well outlet locations. So there's a variety of places where you can go to purchase those bus passes uh, wherever it's most convenient for you. Those passes are also available through the MyDart mobile app uh, if you have access to a smartphone and, and want to pay that way. Um, and then the nice thing about these passes is you buy them once and then you use them as many times as you need to or want to that week or that month. Um, so again, especially for our folks who are using the bus more frequently, that weekly or monthly bus pass is really going to really pay for itself over the course of that month if you're riding more regularly. Um, and then obviously we do have uh, weekly and uh, monthly half fare bus passes. Uh, kids under the age of five ride for free. Kids over the age of like from six to 11 ride for half fare. Um, the bus tokens that we sell come in packs of 10. So if you're not familiar with those, um, they're little gold coins. We have them in full fare and half fare options. Uh, you just drop a token in the fare box each time you're boarding. So they cover the, the base fare. Um, so again, th that's going to be more beneficial for folks who are probably riding less frequently, but are really nice because you don't have to have exact change. You kind of pre-buy pre them and then you just drop them in the fare box as you're boarding. So, um, so who qualifies for half fare? We have a couple different programs under this umbrella. Uh, one being our kind of traditional half fare program. Uh, this is going to be available to anyone over the age of 65, individuals with disabilities, uh, refugees, the first five years that they're here in the United States, um, and middle and high school students do ride for half fare as well. Um, I will just stick in a little caveat for uh, the students, so middle and high school students. 
Um, that would include middle and high school students at any of our member communities, so all 11 of those communities. But we do have a very specific relationship with Des Moines Public Schools, um, where Des Moines Public School students actually ride for free evenings, weekends, anytime school's not in session. Um, and then they ride for half fare um, during the day, unless they are assigned DART for their transportation. So the, the uh, Des Moines Public Schools, um, depending on someone's location or closeness to the school, uh, they might be assigned a yellow bus transportation or they might be assigned a DART for transportation. Uh, so we do have some kind of DART school bus routes that we offer to help get students to and from school. Oftentimes those students do ride for free because that's provided uh, because through the school, uh, so I just wanted to throw in that little caveat about the, the students, because uh, I know that is a common question that we get. Um, our newer program is called Ride to Thrive. This is a program that we launched uh, back in 2021 as a pilot program um, and officially uh, launched the permanent part of our uh, FAIR policy, FAIR program. Uh, just last year. Uh, this is a program that's really designed to help people who might be receiving some form of community assistance uh, or social service uh, benefit to access half fare through DART. Uh, so this is going to be for folks who are receiving some form of food assistance, housing assistance, or are connected to an agency that's providing workforce training. Uh, so really what we ask anyone who might qualify for these programs to do is to come down to Dart Central Station, uh, bring a photo ID with them, bring proof that they would qualify for one of those programs. Uh, so proof could be as simple as if you're over 65, bring an ID card that has an ID that has your date of birth on it. Uh, if you're on food assistance, that could be bringing the letter you get from DHS that states you're receiving uh, that food assistance, or we do allow agencies to refer their clients to the program. So for example, if you were going through like a em employment skills training with Goodwill or Project Iowa or something like that, that agency could provide you a letter saying that you're receiving services and that would be the proof that we would need to enroll you in one of these programs. So it's relatively simple, but we do ask people to come into Dart Central Station uh, because we do issue folks an ID card that kind of looks like this. It says half fare or ride to thrive. Uh, the reason that we do that is our operators are really good at driving buses, but they're really bad at telling how old someone is. Uh, so we don't want them to have to be making that decision as someone boards the bus whether or not they're over 65, whether they have a disability, uh, you know, we can't necessarily tell who's on food assistance or who's on housing assistance. Uh, so the way that we can streamline that process for our operators is to provide our customers who qualify for these programs with an ID card uh, that they just carry with them when they're riding the bus. You just flash that to the operator when you board, so that way they know to only charge you that half fare amount versus the full fare amount. Uh, so this ID card uh, would be made available to you when you sign up. Uh, you will, there's no cost to getting that first card. If you ever lose it, we can always reprint one for a minor uh, cost. Um, and then you just have that card with you when you're boarding the bus, when you're paying uh, to purchase bus passes uh, and things like that. Again, as your proof uh, that you don't have to pay the full amount. I know I talked a little bit about the, the app. Uh, but with the app, there are ways that you can purchase bus passes and fare on your phone through the app. Uh, and that does also include individuals who are on these programs. Uh, so if that is a program that you would ever sign up for or know someone that would, um, you would just want to encourage them to enroll in the um, half fare through the app when they sign up at customer service. So our team will actually program the individual's app to show half fare versus full fare. Um, so that can be done anytime down at Dart Central Station. Um, kind of shifting away from kind of our programs, um, we do partner with a number of organizations uh, that allow, that partner with Dart, contract with Dart to allow their employees, uh, their, their faculty members, their students, or their tenants to ride the bus for free. Uh, so we often see this as an employee benefit or a benefit that's provided to individuals um, where they can have unlimited access to DART um, anytime that they need to travel on the bus and that is paid for by their employer. Um, so we have a number of our downtown employers who participate in this. So uh, Principal, Nationwide, EMC, the City of Des Moines, Polk County, um, uh, there's a whole list of them. We have over 20 uh, partners in total. 
all of our local universities part participate in that. This so students, faculty, staff, uh, Drake and Grandview and DMAC and DMU, just to name a few. Uh, we have Unity Point, uh, the hospital included in this. Um, I do want to call attention to two of our newest partnerships that have just developed in the last couple of years, uh, one being Newberry Living and the other being Conlin Properties. So if you're not familiar with these organizations, uh, Newberry Living is a senior property management. They primarily serve individuals who are uh, 55 and over. I, I believe the age, I could be wrong there, uh, but they have a number of kind of senior living properties throughout the metro. Conlin Properties is an apartment complex uh, property management company. They, they have a number of apartment complexes they manage. Um, so for tenants at these organizations, so at Newberry and at Conlin, uh, there are select locations where tenants get to ride the bus for free through a pass that's provided by their, their property manager or their landlord, more or less. Um, so it's kind of a, a, a benefit for living at that facility or in that apartment complex. So um, I'll just call attention to, to who those complexes are. So with Newberry Living, that's going to include their Plymouth Place property on 42nd and um, Ingersoll, uh, Corinthian Gardens up on University Avenue, um, Elsie Mason Manor and Lagudi Tower, which are here in, down, here in downtown that way. Um, and then they're getting ready to open up a new facility on Grand that will be included in that. Um, Conlin uh, Properties, uh, they manage a large number of apartment complexes, but currently seven of their properties are participating in this as kind of a pilot. Um, that would include Deer Ridge Apartments on the southwest side of Des Moines. It's like uh, 63rd Street in Creston. Um, Chapel Ridge West in West Des Moines on the EP True Mill Civic Parkway. Um, Douglas Woods Apartments, which is an apartment complex on Douglas Avenue, Parkside East, Hilltop Apartments, which are over on Hubble, kind of on the east side of Des Moines, and then um, Hilltop Apartments, sorry, I just said that one, uh, Sunburst Apartments and Willow Bend Apartments, which are on Southwest Ninth. Um, those are just a couple of the, the partnerships that we have. Um, the, again, uh, for the folks who maybe work or participate in these programs, they get to ride the bus for free anytime. It's not just to get to and from work, it's truly unlimited access. Uh, that is the benefit that is provided by those employers. Uh, kind of similarly, we do partner with the Polk County VA office uh, and hospital uh, to allow veterans to ride the bus for free. Uh, we don't have them actually sign up for the program. Uh, we just encourage them to ride the bus with an ID card that they already have um, as their proof that they're a veteran. So that can be their, their Iowa ID or driver's license, their VA Connect card, their retired military card, um, or if they do not have access to any of those documents, um, they can work with the Polk County um, Veterans Affairs Office over at uh, Polk County River Place and actually get uh, an ID card to write for us. Um, and then lastly, related to some of the programs that I want to talk about, we do have our, our ADA paratransit or bus plus program. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different. A lot of the, the conversation so far has been around our fixed route bus service, uh, where we operate that on regular routes, picking up at bus stops, you know, um, very much uh, relying on you as the rider to be able to get to the service and running in that regular frequency and route. Um, as a public transportation agency who provides the fixed route service, uh, we have a federal requirement uh, to offer an ADA complimentary paratransit service uh, or what we call bus plus. Um, so this is a service that is uh, available to individuals who uh, apply and qualify for the service. Um, so it's not necessarily open to the general public, but it's open to anyone who's applied and qualified based on their disability. Uh, so it is for individuals who have a disability or impairment or something that prevents them from using the regular service. So that could be a physical limitation, it could be a, a, mental, um, a mental health diagnosis, it could be cognitive, um, or it could be um, really anything that would, again, prevent them from using the, the regular service. Uh, once approved, uh, someone can travel within our service area for any reason, uh, anytime our service is operating, uh, and they would just pay a base fare of $3.50. Uh, it is a door-to-door -door service, so what that means is that they would reserve a trip 
by calling Dart. Uh, we set them up with a trip time that will send a vehicle out. We pick them up at their door and then drop them off at their destination. Uh, so it is a much more customized service uh, that can include um, the operator providing assistance to get someone from their door into the vehicle and assistance from that vehicle into their final destination. Uh, individuals can also um, travel with a companion or a personal care attendant if they need to do that as well. Um, and the, this service really does uh, kind of mirror our regular service as far as the zone in which we're providing it within, uh, as well as the service hours. So we operate in kind of a three quarter mile radius around where our fixed route service is um, to help kind of capture people who might be uh, living just outside of the, the fixed route service who might rely on or need this more ADA service. Um, and then that is a seven day a week service where people can use it on the weekends uh, until you know, 10, 11 o'clock at night, just like our regular service runs. So uh, we do operate this with uh, different operators than our fixed route service. So oftentimes these operators are going through more specialized training about providing that um, extra level of care and assistance to individuals um, who might be a little bit more vulnerable or have varying needs. And then the last thing I wanna talk about is um, tools and technology. This is really, um, you know, there's a lot of ways to get information about DART, about how to use DART. Uh, obviously there's a lot of things that I covered today and I don't expect all of that to resonate with you. You might uh, forget some of the little things that I talked about. Um, so at the end of the day, I always encourage folks to go out onto the website. There's a ton of information on there. Uh, we have tabs for all of the different routes. So you can look at very specific routes, look at those maps, look at those timetables, look at the big map of all the routes, um, all the different fair programs and services that we uh, talked about are listed on here. Um, I mentioned detours earlier. If you ever want to get alerts, you know, if you're going to be using the bus and you want to be alerted when there's going to be a detour on your route, uh, or when there might be bus stops that are closed because, because of construction, uh, that's impacting my commute right now because there's uh, uh, some sewer work happening on Franklin Avenue. So about half of the streets closed off. Luckily I'm at like the bus stop right before all that happens. Uh, but obviously that impacts my commute because we're on detour for part of it. Um, so if you ever want to get alerts about when those detours are happening and how it might impact you, uh, go into our website, you can sign up for email alerts and, and get all that information. Um, you know, we've talked a little bit about the MyDart app, um, and I just really want to reiterate that if you do have access to a smartphone, uh, using the MyDart app is one way that you can get real-time information right here in your hands. Uh, it's a free app that's available on most Android and iOS devices. You can do everything from creating an account, purchasing fare, buying tickets on there um, that would require, you know, connecting to payment methods or Apple Pay or Google Pay, your bank account, things like that. Um, or you don't have to do that. Uh, maybe you just want to use it to plan a trip on the bus or get bus time information. Um, so again, you can, you can really commit to using it for the whole rider experience, or maybe if you're just wanting to use a physical bus pass or pay cash as you go, or maybe you work or live at one of those unlimited access partners, um, then maybe what's going to be most beneficial for you in the app is the feature like the trip planner, where you can type in your address uh, into the trip planner, you can type in where you're traveling on the bus and then get real time information about uh, how to ride the bus, uh, what bus stop to go to, how far you might have to walk, what route to get on to, if you need to transfer. All that's going to be really broken down for you in a step by step fashion. So that way, it really, I always like to think of it, it takes all the guesswork out. You don't have to guess what side of the street you're walking to to get on the bus. You don't have to guess what route you're going to be getting onto once you get there. Um, it's really going to break that down for you. One of the nice things that I really like about this too is if you're going to be regularly riding the bus, there's a lot of ways that you can capture uh, what's most important to you and save those, those trips and those addresses. So you can favorite specific trips so you don't have to type in that information again. You can favorite specific bus stops. So that way when you open up the app, it just automatically goes to that bus stop or you can tap on it really easily. Uh, if you are more of a paper person, uh, if you're doing this on your computer, you can print off the, the trip plan and get those step-by-step -step directions. 
Uh, if you're a calendar person like me, uh, you can export this trip right to your calendar so you get notifications when you want to leave to go catch your bus. Uh, so again, there's lots of ways that you can really customize this to what's going to work best for you. Um, and then the last thing with the app that I would just point out is that we do have the uh, Next Start Bus feature, which uh, this is really um, a great way to get real-time information about where the bus is. Um, so when you open up this app, <laughs> for a second there, I thought my voice was going through. <laughs> A good reminder that we're at we're at 7 30 so i just need to wrap things up but i could talk about this the whole day um so with the next start bus feature um again once you open this up um you have a couple of different things that you can do um you can type in your address you can use your phone's location um you can type in the bus stop number that you're at or you can open up this map and just click on the bus stop where you're at or where you're located. And then you get uh, here on the left, uh, a listing of the next bus times, what bus it is, uh, how far away it is, um, the little kind of blue uh, lines that you see there actually indicate that the bus is moving, uh, that that's real time information about the bus. Uh, you know, we have the uh, Wi Fi, the Wi Fi routers on the bus actually are constantly sending out the bus's location. Uh, so the app is able to actually communicate that to you as a rider uh, if the bus is running on time, if it's running late, anything like that. Um, the other thing would be uh, if you don't have data on your phone or maybe you don't want to use the data on your phone, um, there are ways that you can call or text for bus time information. Um, and what the information here on the sign is at every bus stop. So we have that sign out there um, with the phone number or the information about texting for bus times. The texting feature is super easy. Uh, you literally just type in 515-515 as the, the number you're sending to. And then in the message, you include Dart and then that four digit number. You send that in, you get a text message back in a minute, less than a minute usually, that will then tell you the bus times for the next couple of bus routes that are stopping at that bus stop. Um, so again, it's, it's really providing you with that, that level of assurance of when that bus is coming, how long you might need to be waiting out there and things like that. Um, also, obviously, I recognize that all of our phones come pre-programmed usually with apps for mapping um, and directions and things like that. So if you're more comfortable using Apple Maps, Google Maps, Bing Maps, or anything like that, you can use those map features. Um, oftentimes, you'll just need to navigate to the transit directions because most of those apps will default to walking or driving directions. Uh, so oftentimes, that's just kind of 